What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Vontae the first. We're back again for another video. Y'all already know, man. It's gonna be the final, final video this of this session, and it's gonna be the final video of my read through, and I'll be all cut up with the rest of y'all. So let's get into it. I ain't gonna try and make it too long. I'm gonna try and fly through these chapters and see what's going on. You feel me? Let's get into it though. Chapter 228. The legendary duo takes on South as the battle goes on. So yeah, he is speaking Spanish now. I think about it. Forte. Damn, this man is crazy. Ooh, I like this panel. That's a nice panel. Ooh, look at the fighting Corey. How, how the fuck did he get his leg past him like that? That's kind of crazy. That boy got that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lev from uh, from Haikyuu Volleyball. When he when his hands get hella like intangible or whatever the fuck. Like, it gets all wop. Like, I don't know, when he hits it, it just look crazy. That's what it looked like with his leg right here. God damn, that roundhouse kick, though. What the fuck? Damn, that hurt, though. He got him. Whoa, that boy. Wow, this man is a crazy aerial kicker fighter. <laughs> He's so fast. How is he attacking while in mid? That's why I was just saying a crazy fighter in air. I swear, every time I say shit, you guys already know. I'm going to say it again. Damn. Ura. Oh, my God. He... He, oh my lord. Damn, he punched the fuck out of South. What kind of power was that? South flew like two meters. That's insane. Waka with his <laughs> insane agility and Benke, or Benke with his Hercu Her Herculean, Herculean strength. This is the power of first gen of the first gen black dragon duo. Nice one, Benke. Well, couldn't do it without <laughs> your help. Now I just realized how much the Black Dragons really have fallen. Now that I really think about it, like these guys, you know, Akashi and Shinshiro, like they were the top. These are two of the most like notorious gangs and then Shinshiro took them in to make this big ass Black Dragon gang. And then we went all the way to the fucking ninth generation where um, Madarame's weak ass, they lost against some fucking 12 year olds. I mean, I know they're probably 12 too and shit, but like, that game really fell from grace like crazy. They lost to 12 year olds. And these were grown men. Well, at the time they weren't grown men, but like they were teenagers at the time. Wow. Black Dragon really fell from grace like like they said. <laughs> wow. It's like it's almost like a, a school team in sports. Like you like one year maybe in high school, they're like that team was fucking raw and all of a sudden they was ass. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Okay, let's get let's keep going. You good with this, Mikey? Seems like this battle is going to end at Brahma's victory. You think so? Huh? This house just laying on the ground. This boy set up like the Undertaker <laughs> at the age of twelve. I had a man who I refer who I referred to as my father. I beat him to death with all the love I had for him. He is on Taiju time, and that's crazy. Taiju wouldn't beat Yuza. Huh? And uh, Hakai to death, but he would beat him out of love. They, I don't know, it's some weird shit. Gun wounds, and he got shot. At, fir at 14, a raid on my house took my mother's life in the crossfire. I struggled between life and death with these scars. This man had a rough upbringing. But I can't stop this urge. The urge, dark impulses. So he has dark impulses too. Interesting. And to think that I'd be beaten by the likes of you, it makes my violent urges get stronger and stronger and strong whoa he is wow the panels have to be scrib like scribble like on some fucking jujutsu kaisen uh hunter hunter type style right there i'm not saying it's, it's the same but i'm just saying it's similar in terms of the scribble scrabble you know what i'm saying this man is crazy dog damn thanks to these urges of mine i've come to love violence mikey you get me don't you the legendary duo both taken out, you monster. Oh my God. Senju, oh shit, Senju. Hey Senju, tell me if you got some dark urges. I mean, not 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 too dark, but I, I need you to rival him right now. I'm sorry, Waka, but I can't just stand and watch. I'll deal with you myself. Okay. Viva Che. <laughs> the showdown begins. <laughs> Let's get into this next chapter, man. I gotta say shit. Oh, but the dark impulse thing is really crazy. So basically, it's just another word or term for violence. So we know Mikey is very violent. He just has this violent nature. I guess that's on the on the moral compass of like being a psychopath, maybe, and a sociopath. 
it's some kind of crazy tendency that's there that make them tap like that. Tapped basically means crazy, all right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow, interesting though. Look at all the people that's fucking beat the fuck up. I finally caught up to you. Oh. Watching the whole thing from the sidelines, that is not like you, Mikey. Thought I could just sit and watch out uh, and watch, but here you are, Kakucho. I've always wanted to fight you. He, yeah, you're not gonna. I mean, you could kind of keep up with Mikey a little bit, but you're not gonna, you know, nah. Nah. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if South is relatively the same as Mikey in terms of strength, then nah, he can't. <laughs> Stop it, send you. It's too early for you to take on South. The three of us can handle this fight. Shut your mouth, Takeomi. I never wanted the, the fight to go this way. But at this point, Brahman is done for. Ooh, she coming in. She kicked that nigga. Yeah, I think she kicked him. Send you, or did he, or did she get punched? Okay, no, she she back on her feet. She did get punched. That's enough, Senju. You're under SMA and Waka and Binky. There's no way you can win this fight. Akashi-san, what do you mean by that? Senju got herself included in the three deities only through first gen Black Dragon support. Senju can't take this fight alone. This is bad. I was wrong, Senju. I lost my cool. You don't have to do the same thing. Get out, get out of there while you can still while you still can. Die, bro, man. Oh shit, since when did I start avoiding my potential? Look at her eyes. She got some different shit. <laughs> got some different shit going on. Ooh, she's quick. Eh? <laughs> wow. She grabbed his arm and kicked him in the she know where to she knows where to hit people. I, I noticed that. She knows them temple kicks. That's what Mikey does all the time. Temple kicks, neck kicks, all that shit. That rhyme. <laughs> Ooh, I like this panel. Ooh, that's a nice panel. His head whole head is getting turned the fuck away. Money is power, that's right. It was around that time. How valuable do you think your strength is? I realized how my abilities could lead uh, Takiomi on the wrong path. Whoa, look at her aura. <laughs> that's crazy. Ta Takiomi, Brahmin's boss is me. Senju's true strength. Wow. I love that. I'm starting to notice with manga. I don't know if this has always been the case for a lot of manga, like in the past, but I've noticed like a lot of like modern and new gen stuff. They're starting to use certain things as like an aesthetic. Like think of Demon Slayer, for example. We learned that literally all of the um the uh, the breathing techniques and shit like that, like you know, fire breathing, water breathing, all of that shit is actually not. It's really not there. It's like the water it doesn't exist. It's just an aesthetic thing. And it's based off of the stances and certain moves and techniques that they use is like that, you know, like how um, obviously Tanjiro, when he's using uh, any kind of water, water breathing technique, right? He's moving in a very fluent type of way with the sword and his stances and all that versus when he does the Hinokami Kagura. It's more like a dance and he's more intense with it. And then, of course, all the other breathing forms, you know, you got Inosuke or his own that he came up with that's very aggressive you know, um, I just like that now a lot of modern sh uh, series are not using like power systems where literally they have this like, you know, key blast out of their hands and all this other mind shit, genjutsus and all this shit. But they're actually using like from their own skill and their own emotion It's showing, you know, a different kind of aesthetic, you know, with their aura of these characters and stuff. The dark impulse thing, like that's more of an aesthetic and just because it's, it's a whole violent type of nature from these characters like South and Mikey, you know, with Senju, she has her own type of skill and aura. And we see an Angry. Angry has his own as well. He's like very, um, you know, when he gets really mad, he gets stronger as shit, you know? Um, even Taiju, his whole thing about the percentages remind me of uh, Tagoro from Yu Yu Hakusho. But of course, it's not actually them using powers. It's just that they're skilled as fuck, you know what I'm saying? And whatever they the whatever the fighting that they're using type of fighting or just from pure emotion like i said with angry and some other people so i really like that manga is starting to do that now you know it makes it it still makes it interesting because it's like okay we know it's a shonen and then we get to see certain things that we're familiar with with other shonen shows where we actually see powers and shit so it makes it familiar with us but it still has a very real life feel to it because they're not actually using power powers you know Anyway, let me get back to this. I said I was going to talk too much in this video, but my bad. I'm going to get back into it, though. 
The first gen Black Dragon once ruled the nation with me as the vice captain. I was feared since my decisions determined how any conflict would end. I was called the God of War. Interesting. But oh, this is the next chapter, by the way, 230. But holy crap, Shannon, how did you get up? How did you get up there? I shouldn't be the one who gets all the credit. I've always been an ordinary kid. Whether it be in sports or studies, I was just average. Takeomi. I was I was but a normal child, not special at all. But my childhood friend, Sano Shinshido, this is it, the breeze of new era. He had a mysterious charm. Remember I always said that. I literally kept saying Shinshiro and Takamichi's charm. This is the first time I think they actually said his charm, maybe. But I know that's just the word I've been using for forever. You know what I'm saying? He had a mysterious charm that, a charm that attracted people around him. Exactly, similar to Takamichi. Even with that charm, Shin never resorted to violence. Here, how about you try to put your legs on the pipes? Oh, I can actually stand here. Can you feel the breeze? He was just very earnest and kind. He didn't pick fights with anyone stronger than him. Never won any fight. And top and top of all, uh, top of it all, he was a crybaby. We'd call him the Weak King, Takamichi, man. Even the people who fought him ended up liking him. Look at <laughs> Takamichi. Look at all of your battle scars. A loser in both fights and love. Quit it. Hey, man, that's none of your business. And I was always by Shin's side. Hey, let's make a team. Takayomi, you'll be the vice president. Wait, me? And from that instant, I became the vice president of the largest gang in Japan. God of war, God of war, God of war. Drunk in the praises of, of my name, I became arrogant. This band, but why? I mean, we just became Japan's number one. Wow, this makes so much sense now. It makes so much sense. Wow. So... Mikey did the same thing that his brother did. But there's like a difference though. Hold on, let me continue though. Now that there's no one better than us, at this point it's just gonna be bullying the people weaker than us, wouldn't it? You're gonna give this up that easily with the large power and influence I gained from the Black Dragon, I continued on with the gang life. I was treated like a VIP in town. I never got short on money. Thank you, thank you for your service. As years went by, my influence faded away, yet I continued on with this life. And in five years, that lavish lifestyle came to an end. All I had was my debts piling up. You know something though? I know it might not go right, it might not go the right way. But honestly, I think that he needs to talk to Mikey. Because it's similar. Shinshiro, he disbanded the game, just like Mikey did. But Shinshiro, he wants to do bike shop shit. You know what I'm saying? He was doing all this. He was living life. Mikey is still within this life, just like uh, Akashi was still in that life as well. He knows what happens. He He's a senior. He knows, man. So it's like, you knew that that was your big bro's best friend, for one. So you, he should have been close to you no matter what. And two, it's like, he knows. Damn. And then it makes it even deeper because knowing that Draken died and seeing how Akashi uh, reacted to that, he was pissed off. That's where the fight pretty much started between South, you know, the Brahman and Rokohada and all that and Kanto. It's like he was pissed off that um that um you know that dragon died. Cause I guess it kind of reminds him of like Shinshiro living his own life with the whole bike biker uh the bike shop shit. And you know, and then just having that relationship being the number two to these guys. Hmm, I like Akashi's character, man. I actually really like him. He's only been in the manga for like, I don't know how long, not too long from what I've been reading, maybe 30 chapters or so, but I really like his character though. I really do. Well, I'm, I'm gonna keep going though. At the rate my life was going, I was in danger. It was around that time that I got news of Shin's death, but I was too busy and struggling for money. Five years later, year 2006, the invincible Mikey from the Tokyo Manji gang, I wanna take him on, huh? <laughs> Um, therefore, I want to make a team of my own. Oh, this is Sinju talking. Oh, oh, okay. So that's why he made, so his little sister wanted to start the gang and all that shit. Interesting. She does resemble Mikey in some ways. I think the author does that on purpose to like kind of show the, they're like opposites, but very, just showing the parallels in general. I like that. Wow. So she had to been, wait, this said 2006. So she was um, like 
like 15, 16 years old at this time. Obviously this is, you know, um, what we've seen like from the end of Tenjuku or going to New Year's and all that shit, right? Um, and also, I wonder how, how old he is at this point. Like it's 10 years old, so like 25, 26. Therefore, I want to make a team of my own. You want to make a team? Your little sis' strength is not a joke. No one in my gym could win against her, you know? <laughs> I want someone who I can trust. Someone who can give some guidance to the team. Will you feel that role, big bro? Ah, and then now when I'm really thinking about it, the fact that they're seeking out for Takamichi and they're probably hearing about all the shit that Takamichi did, which is very similar to Shinshiro, it all makes sense now. It really does. I was broken, powerless. It was at the lowest of low. And this makes a lot of sense too. Cause I'm like, why would, why would he, I was questioning it. I was like, why would he give this gang to his little sister? Unless he had like some kind of ulterior motive or something. But it makes sense. He was like depressed. He was fucked up. He had all this debt. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense that he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Why not? My little sis, she got like some big, you know, she seemed like she's going to have some big goals and dreams ahead of her. She's in her youth. She might help me get back on track. And I like that. That's actually really interesting. That just goes to show how much he cares and how much he believes in his little sister. I love the like sibling shit in this, the drama, the relationships within these characters in this story, because it's like, wow, he really like, he he really rocks with his sister. That's actually really dope. I like that a lot. We've seen different kinds of sibling stuff. You know, we see Mitya just having to take care of his younger siblings. We've seen, um, you know, the whole shit with Taiju, Yuzaha, and uh, Hakai and all that. But then we see this too. And then we see Shinshiro and Mikey. We see Izana and Mikey and Emma. You know, all this stuff. I love it, man. I love it. But they accepted me as I was in return, I swore to give my all to them. Exactly, I like that, I really do. Sinju, you've been holding back, haven't you? It's all my fault, I lost all my faith in you. You know, this reminds me, oh wow. Yeah, it, this reminds me of um, Hakai, kinda. Hakai seemed like this kind of, you know, um, and there's another fake out from the author that was similar, you know? Remember I was talking about how the Draken and Baji situation was kinda off too? And then they finally showing that they actually got wounded and whatever and got, you know, and died ultimately. It reminds me of, um, uh, like this, like he reminds me of Hakai because I thought Hakai was going to be this aggressive fighter, this crazy ass guy. I thought Hakashi was going to be the same way essentially too. But instead they're actually really like, like there's stuff that's holding them back within themselves that they, you know, is, I, I like it. This is different. It was a very, it was a really good misdirect. Me personally, it was very much a misdirect. I thought he was gonna be like really aggressive and all this stuff, but no, he's actually a really normal person, just like how Hakai was essentially. So I like that a lot. I, I've, I failed. Brahman's principles. Wow. And he's breaking down similar to Hakai too, from what I remember. I've lost your trust ever since we got dragging into Brahman, Takiomi. You got it all wrong. All of this isn't your fault. It's my responsibility. I was not able to stop you. I'm responsible for Dragon's death too. I'm disappointing as Brahman as drama is leader. So all I can do now is take this guy down. I feel her. I feel her though. It's not true. You know, she. It's not her fault. It's not. But I feel her though. You know. Like Dragon said, everything he's doing in his life is his, own, is his own will, which makes sense, which kind of pisses me off too, because it's like, I feel that people want to blame people for certain things a lot of times in life, but it's like, if you're the one that made a certain choice on your own accord, I'll be pissed off if somebody say, oh, the only reason why this per this happened to this person is because this person did this. And I'm like, nah, I did this my way and whatever happened to me happened it's me whether it's my fault or um it's something that i actually like that i did you know what i'm saying like you can't take away people's actions and say that it's because of somebody else fuck that everybody has their own will in some regard you know so i like that dragon told takamichi that because it's like senju and akashi they kind of feel that way where it's like they you know they failed brahman in certain certain ways and you know, Draken died and that's on them. But it's like, no, Draken didn't. It's not your fault that he died. It's not Draken's fault that he died either. I mean, essentially, I'm not saying he's at fault for it, but it's like, it was his choice to do what he did and that resulted in his death. That's just how life goes, you know? 
So I'll be pissed off. Like if I was drafting and I heard people say, oh, it was my fault, I'll be pissed. I'm like, no, what the fuck is my fault? You know, it's not your fault, it's my fault, right? Um, just like with the Baji situation with Kazutora, you know, it's like Baji off to himself so that Kazutora wouldn't feel that burden to, you know, um, yeah, to, you know, to make men's amends with, you know, Kazutora and Tomon and all that kind of shit, right? So it was like, it was Baji's choice to do that. We've seen in this manga, it's been people's choices. Like, even though we know the main protagonist is making changes to timelines and stuff and saving people, ultimately, we still see every character choose things. Hakai choosing to fight against his brother Taiju. You know, all this other stuff with other people making all these choices. It's like, we see this time and time again. And I'm really liking this theme of the series that, like, everybody has their own will to do shit. And I like that, you know, it's showing realism. Some people feel like they're, they're, that they're still at fault that certain shit happens. And then some people, you know, um, can just accept that certain things happen because some, somebody did something in one way, just like with Draken, him doing what he did to save Takamichi and Senju, you know? So I, I really like that theme in this series. I love all the themes in the series. You already know how I feel about loneliness, the romance. Y'all already know about all that shit. But let me keep going. I said I wasn't gonna talk that much, but I did, so my bad. Let me keep going. <laughs> it's been a while since I've gotten this fired up. The unmatched Taiju, I mean Senju. I said Taiju. It's Senju. The unmatched versus the unparalleled. So we got unmatched, unparalleled, and invincible. <laughs> Let's get into this next chapter, though. Chapter 231. So Kakucho, he, he punched the fuck out of Mikey. He just ate it. What's wrong, Mikey? Are you holding back on me? Then why are you even here? Hmm. He's been taking punches from me, yet he's not reacting at all. It's as if I'm punching a ghost. He's dead inside, man. Can, oh, I mean, I was just about to say that. Thinking about this boy Draken, man. I mean, Kenshin, I'm empty inside. Shrouded by darkness. Ooh, shit. That's true, though, man. He is shrouded by darkness. Similar thing with self, you know, that whole dark impulse and just this violent nature within these guys, you know? Mikey wanted to be like his brother Shinshiro, but he never could be because of this this shit just this is just who he is this is just the nature of him you know and i feel like people are mad about this but we've seen this for so long in this series with mikey we've seen him being this kind of crazed person but another thing people got to remember is that think of shinshiro and think of takamichi especially shinshiro for one he has this charm to attract people he's not a fighter he loses a lot and they make jokes about him with his love life and all this shit you know he's not a perfect person but he has his stature where everybody likes to follow him. He has his charm. So it's like, people are just born with certain things within them. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mikey was just born to be this physical specimen that just can win every fight and does not know defeat, essentially. And then his brother Shinsho is somebody that's just really good at having people, like, just getting people on the side. That's just something that he's just born with. His nature is just good and it attracts to people. And you have Takamichi, same way, similar, very similar way. You have people like Hina that just know every... I've said this so much when I've been reading this. Hina just knows when to say things and to do things. I love Hina a lot because that's just her personality. Her personality gravitates to me as a reader because she's she's just like... She's a very comfort, like a very nurturing type of person, which I like. Everybody has these qualities within this manga that all these characters seemingly were born from or some of their upbringing in childhood or you know just childhood in general has you know had influence on their life and we see what mikey obviously with his life people just dying left and right in his life all these people close to him makes it worse for him within his nature you know because he already is violent not in the most terriblest way but all this shit that's starting to egg on on him and like his mentality and all this shit it's eating at him. It's eating at his soul. That's why he's saying darkness. That's why Kakujo said he's essentially like a ghost right now. All this shit is making him worse and worse and worse and worse. He's already this person that fights a lot. So what happens to somebody that's all for fighting, that's into fighting, that's really good at fighting? Violence. Who? What happens to somebody that's always around violence? As they start to lose more people, they get worse themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, it's not a rocket science. It's so easy and it, I, I like the writing of this character. It's very tragic, but I like it nonetheless. 
Oh shit. Whoa. Is he about to fuck up Kakucho? Vivo Kawaragi Senju. This is the first time I felt this great. A new rhythm is born. Such a blissful moment. I want this beat to go on and on. Oh, this man crazy. Hey, this better be a, a good ass OSC for imagine like a Brazilian type of OSC coming on right now. I mean, I don't want him to beat up Senju, but you can still make his OST come on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man, when, when the anime, you know, when we get to this point. Damn, Senju. That monster pushed Senju away. Did he grab this man Takamichi? Move, Hanagaki Takamichi. Hey, Senju, save this boy. He saved you, man. Save this boy. Eh? Oh, he just had a vision once he touched him. Oh my God. And he's like fucked up and dead. Whoa. He's dead. Huh? Was that that vision? South was dead. A monster like him dead. This man, Mikey, probably about to kill this man. Kakucho? What the fuck? Kakucho's fucked up. He getting knocked out. Yeah, he got beat the fuck up. Now, Mikey's in front of South. Right in front of us. This man, Mikey, look like a fucking horror movie villain. What the fuck is this? South died in the vision. Now, Mikey is here. Could it be? What the fuck? It's Mikey versus South. I'm on the next chapter, by the way, 232. It's Mikey versus South, but what was that vision about? He finally made a move, Sano Manjido. It takes two to tango. That's the chapter title. Mikey come. Yo, that boy Kakucho is fucked up. You, what are you up to? Get out of the way, Mikey. South is my opponent. Oh, shit. Look how you look. Whoa, look how you look at Senju. You want to die next? Wow. What the hell is this murderous vibe I'm getting? Let's go, Mikey. Let's begin the Rec Room final, uh, finale. It is personal with Mikey. Dragon just died. It is personal. It's very personal. He's sweet chin music, this man. <laughs> this is giving me the goosebumps. Oh my God. Our strength is on par. Now that, now this is what I've been looking for. The thing is, I understand you think your, your strength is on par with him right now, but his best friend just died, got killed by one of your guys. You're not matching up with him right now. With no one interfering, a, fan, uh, uh, a sanctuary of you and me. Look how the panels look. God, they, they really want some Jujutsu Kaisen Hunter Hunter timing right here. That makes sense though. Now I'm thinking about the fighting choreography. We see where there's panels where people get hit and they're, like, they're bouncing on the ground. It reminds me of Jujutsu Kaisen. So I'm assuming that uh, Kinsan, the, the, the mangaka, he's really taking note on like other uh, mangaka. I like that. The beat is, I really want to hear <laughs> this music, man. This one, Takamichi stepped in front of self. That's enough, Mikey. Hanagaki, you shit. Why did you stop us? You got to stop this. I feel Takamichi, man. It's not about saving. It's, see, I think on a service level, people might see this and be like, why is he protecting self? It's not about that. It's about protecting Mikey, making him not go deeper and deeper and deeper into this darkness. And I like that a lot. That just goes to show how much of a hero, because Takamichi literally is the crybaby hero, how much of a hero he is. I like this, man. Or else self will die. Yeah, tell him, man. Oh, shit. I didn't realize how fucked up South Face is. Whoa. That's a really crazy panel right there. Yeah, because South, talking to me, you know, South don't fucking know. But it's like, hmm, man. Whoa, his eyes are completely, they don't have shit in them. You can't stop destroying things, can you? What the? I can't move my body. I'm the same. That's why I'm here to destroy you. Ah, ah! You know what this reminds me of? It almost reminds me of the whole thing with Kaza Tora and um and um you know Mbaji that situation and that timeline, because at that point Mikey the dark impulses took over him and he was ready to you know what I'm saying he was ready to fuck up uh, uh Kaza Tora and kill him. Um, obviously because Baji died. Now it's Draken that's dead and it's because of South's guy, you know, South and his man and Rokohata and all that shit. That's crazy. Wow, that's full circle. 
that's why I knew this arc reminded me of, I remember I said, I knew this arc reminded me of like back then around like, you know, Bloody Halloween and even um, from like the Mobius stuff. Definitely full circle shit. All the season one shit reminds me of shit from right, that's happening right now. Or shit happening right now reminds me of shit from season one. That's what I meant. But um, damn, man. He's, wow. He's, he's wow. And then just like Kazutora, South is just like Kazutora. They just crazy. They can't stop doing certain shit. Similarities between the two. And then Mikey said, I'm the same. That's why I'm here to destroy you, to like stop him from being worsening into the state that he's in. You know what I'm saying? And to just stop it in general. It's crazy how Mikey, he's able to do all this shit. And it actually is good on like in terms of other people, but for himself, it makes him worse. So it's kind of interesting. You could almost call Mikey, I don't know, this might sound corny, but you could almost call him like a dark hero. Because essentially he does certain things that will actually help other people around him. But when it comes to himself, it makes him worse. I like the dynamic between him and Takamichi. I think that's actually a really good dynamic that the two have. I just want Mikey to stop. And I just turned the page and what do I see? The Kazutora and Mikey incident at the Bloody Halloween. And Takamichi singing about it about it. It's just like what uh what time wait. It's just, it's just like what time when he, that was an error right there. It's just like that time when he confronted um, Kazutora Kun. Mikey Kun turned into a murderer. You, he grabbed Takamichi's arm or in my way. He broke Takamichi's arm. He, whoa. Now then, oh my God. How do you want to die? Oh my God. In the South, he did freeze too. Don't do it, Mikey Kun. The desperation echoes. Oh my God. I'm getting to this next chapter because I'm already I'm already too far in it. I've been talking a whole lot like I said I wasn't. This is so reminiscent to what he did in Kazutora. The exact same shit, man. People all around him on the ground. You know, Draken and Baji both dying or you know what I'm saying? Wow. God damn, he is, whoa. Did he kill him? And the chapter is called Better Late Than Never. He must have killed him. If that's the chapter title, he must have killed him. South, in this division that he got, he's not breathing. It ain't, uh, um, Coco, South. Oh, shit. That man really is big as hell. Seven foot two. He's gone. He really killed him. Are you kidding me, Mikey? Everybody's like, yeah, what the fuck? Because remember, killing is something in this series that we've seen is crazy. You know? Most people that see that, they're like, whoa. <laughs> of course, Sansu don't care. Everyone, listen up. <laughs> Senju has lost to South, and South has lost to Mikey. Senju didn't really lose to South, though. She didn't. Hence, this console Manji Gang's victory. This concludes the conflict. Everyone's dismissed. Clear everything up. Oh, also, too, remember all some of the whole Wills thing? Think about Coco Noe, for example. Him and Seishu, they both went their separate ways here. Both still cool with each other. But, you know, one went with Tomon, and then obviously he's doing his own thing with the bike shit. And then you see Coco, he's still within that. It's all about wills, man. Everybody has their own will and choice to do things. Coco is not in the same position as Mikey, just being terrible and, you know, fucked up and dark. So it's like, we don't have to worry about him. But, like, when it comes to Mikey, we know how he is. And Takamichi knows. So it's like, that's the person that he must save. Kanto, Kanto Manji Gang too. You good, Kakucho? Help those who can't get on their feet. What about South? Repeat now. Who knows? Anyways, it's best for us to get out of here. Mikey, are you even human? There's no reason for you to go that far, you know. Oh shit! You better be careful, Akashi. And he fucking kicked Akashi in the goddamn face and nose. Good. You're better off dead too. Come on, chill out. Stop it, stop it, Mikey. Exactly, Takamichi. Get in front of this nigga, please. You again, you can't do this. This is wrong. And he punches Takamichi. Oh my God. Wow. Mikey, that's enough, okay? We're get, we're retreating. Oh my God. Now then, how do you want to die? Shut the fuck up, Mikey, you fucking psychopath. Ew, I do not like how this panel look. Why did they make Takamichi and him look so goddamn skinny and tall? <laughs> Now then, how do you want to die? Just kidding. 
I do notice the art kind of is it is good in certain ways when it comes to fighting, but some panels I'm sorry I know is the art is kind of looking a little wonky. Uh, it's not a big deal to me though. I don't really give a fuck to be honest. I mean, I've seen mang mangaka go into times where their art wasn't really that great, but the story I'm still invested in that shit, so it's all good. He's not kidding this time. Yo, he is fucking up Takamichi. Oh my god. Hanagaki, yeah, Senju, you gotta, you, yeah, you might have to, yeah. Mikey. Mikey punches uncontrollably. Uh, wait. Mikey punches uncontrollably. Will Takamichi meet the same fate as South Hell? No, he won't. Mikey. To be continued. Uh oh, I'm in my last chapter. I'm caught up with y'all now. Let me read this last chapter. Damn it, I made it a 40 minute video. My bad, y'all. I mean, I told y'all I wasn't gonna make it long, but I talked so much, man. And I hope, I mean, I know I rambled a lot, but I hope you guys can understand everything that I was talking about. <laughs> Let's get to this next chapter, though. Mikey Cook. Oh, and then he woke up in the hospital. So Mikey must have stopped. He, he probably, yeah, he must have stopped. Damn. The hospital. There is no mending. You're awake. And Coco's with him. You've been unconscious for three days. Three days? Whoa. Well, yeah, I was beaten up by Mikey Cook. So why am I alive? Send you safe. Oh, send you safe. That's enough, Mikey. Of course, send you was in no shape to fight. So send you bow down to Mikey and beg to end the conflict by disbanding Brotman itself. Wow. The battle of three deities. The infamous. And that's crazy because send you was the person that said she wanted to, like, you know, rival Mikey and all this. And she did this to save Takamichi. That just goes to show how much Takamichi is, like, you know what I'm saying? How different he is. Okay, so the battle of three deities and the infamous three-sided battle that took two lives. Kanto Manji Gang took over Rokohada Tandai as the battle concluded with Brahman's dissolvement. Kanto Manji Gang reigns as the top in the nation. Well, I better be going off to be sure, uh, be sure, be sure to grasp the aftermath of that huge battle. All right, see you. Senju disbanded the entirety of Brahman to save me, Mikey Kun. He was really about to kill me. He's not the same Mikey Kun that I knew. What the hell? am I doing? I feel him. He's starting to think like, damn, what the fuck am I even doing here? I went back here and he's thinking about it like, damn, he really is a different Mikey, which is very true. But you got to remember Takamichi. You already went back. You got to keep going. But also remember, Mikey wants you to save him. He wants it. I know it's a tall ass fucking task. Whether that means saving him by killing him and stopping him from doing all this other shit, or whether that means getting that nigga in prison, whatever the case may be. You got to stop him from doing what the fuck he's doing to himself and to other people, but more importantly to himself. Oh, Shifu's here. Shifu, I went to Draken's funeral. Wow, they already had the funeral. Every time that has happened, it's hard to take in. It got me pondering. Takamichi, what is wrong with you? I feel him, though. I, I, I do feel him. I do feel him. You met Draken in the future, right? So why is he gone? Why did you have to come back when things were going so well in the future? That's a valid question. It's your fault that Dragon Kun is... Mm -mm. Yeah, don't say that. You can't say that. And it's not. It's not because Draken even told Takamichi, it ain't your fault. It's mine. I chose to do this. That's the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? We're not just reading a manga where these characters are NPCs and they can't make decisions on their own or they're like robots. They can't make decisions on their own. We're reading the manga that's just like any other manga where people have their own choices and decisions that they make. And he chose to save Takamichi because Takamichi saved his life in the past as well. When Draken was literally supposed to die. And since he knows everything about the timeline shit, the time leaving from the future and the past, since he knows all of that stuff and know it, like it, put it like this, right? He saved Draken's life. Draken wasn't even supposed to be here anymore. When Draken found that out, essentially, from Hina and Takamichi telling him everything about, about what happened, time leaving from the future and the past, when he learns about when he learned about that, I mean, at that point, I'll be like, wow, you really saved my life and you didn't even exist within our lives at all at any point in time. At that point, I am in debt to you. You know what I'm saying? Is that the right word to say? I, I owe you, essentially, at one point. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Draken was never mad at Takamichi. It's not Takamichi's fault. Draken's not mad at himself either. You know what I'm saying? So, 
But I understand that Shifu is very frustrated at this point in time. I truly understand that. But just in terms of just in general, whether it's the audience or characters within the series, it's like, it's very understandable that it's like, Takamichi's not at fault for this. He's not. He's not at fault for this. You know what I'm saying? He'll be at fault if he killed Draken. If he was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? That would be different. But he, no, that didn't happen. It didn't. Draken didn't have to be there. You know? So it's, it's all his choice. Like he said it was. It's his own will. I'm sorry, Takamichi. It's okay, shit for you. It's all my fault. He's saying it's his fault, but he, you know, it's not. It's actually really not his fault. When you really think about it. Huh? You, can you leave me alone, please? All right. You better heal soon. So I can beat you with all my heart. Oh, wait. Hina came? Matsuno come. You're going home already? I just finished replacing the flowers. It's all right, Hina-chan. Okay, we getting Hina in here. Let's, let's go. Shifu, I'm sorry. I'll never get anyone involved ever again from now on. That's the thing, though. He didn't really get Draken involved because Draken was technically already involved with Brahman, to be honest. So it's like, it's not his fault. And he's beating himself up, but it's not entirely his fault, though. Of course, him being there makes Draken do that. But it's like, it's you can't make it seem like everything is just one person's fault. And I've learned that, and I think all the audience learned that, too. We can't, we couldn't just point a finger at Kisaki the whole time. You want to know why? Because Izuna exists and he plays a huge role in the whole thing with Kisaki. Um, she had Mikey because now we really understand that truthfully, Mikey was literally the other antagonist, which I think Ken Sun, the mangaka, he did a really good job, a clever job at making two main antagonists for the series where it's come to a point where you don't even know who was actually was more so the main, main antagonist. And I like that a lot, you know? So... It just goes to show, right, that, um, you know, like the whole thing, like you can't blame just one person in the series at all. You just truthfully can't because everybody moves in their own ways that make other things happen. You get what I'm saying, right? So it's like you can't blame anybody for a lot, you know? So that's something I really like about the story, though. But a tragic, a tragic decision, but his gaze proves a strong determination. This will be a battle of my own to be continued and with that i am all caught up with tokyo revengers and i should be reading the next chapter whenever it comes out i guess i think tuesdays because i believe this is all on tuesdays for manga c so yeah man 42 minute video huh it's gonna be a long video so my bad y'all but hey man just know i read all these chapters and finished up this little arc right here the three deity arc uh, i guess that's what it's called it should be called that but yeah, man, I said everything I wanted to say in this video, so I really don't have to say nothing else, but I hope you guys enjoyed my whole read through. I hope you guys actually watch all of it. I know a lot of people probably won't, but I hope you guys know nonetheless to watch all of it. I might do like a little, mm, I guess I don't really need to do a review video of like all my read. I don't think I need to do that, nah. But um, yeah, just stay tuned for the next video. I will be having that. I might end up live streaming them from now on for like a chapter so I could talk to you guys. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So I might do that for you guys. But yeah, like I said in every video, please stay safe, stay healthy, stay clean. I'll see you guys all in the next video. So stay tuned for all the shit I'm going to be dropping within the upcoming weeks and all that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and peace.